Six-sided vehicle. Six-sided vehicle has to do with the height of your vehicle, ground clearance, and the unusual behavior caused by the way the vehicle bends in the middle. If you observe some simple concepts, it will decrease your chances of having an accident. Overhead objects. One of the most common accidents in a commercial motor vehicle, which is 13 feet 6 inches tall, is striking overhead objects. The three main overhead objects you will need to watch out for are bridges, cable wires, and trees. Bridges. First, if you are going to an area that you are not familiar with where there are low bridges, ask your dispatcher or someone with experience in the area what routes to take to avoid them. When approaching any bridge, watch for clearance signs. Your 10 second visual awareness and 5 second following time will help you identify low bridges as well as clearance signs well in advance. If you do not see a clearance sign as you approach a bridge and you question the height of it, stop the truck when you get close. Get out and verify your vehicle will fit before proceeding under the bridge. Cable wires. How do you determine if a cable wire is high enough for your vehicle to pass under it? As your vehicle moves under the line, it will disappear behind the roof of your truck. First, take note if the line is stretched tight or sags in the middle and what it is attached to. If the line sags and you are unsure if your truck will clear it, slow down until you are almost stopped. As your cab enters under the line, look to the sides of your truck for a part of the line that you can see. If the cable moves as you pass under it, stop. It's like fishing. When the line moves, you know your vehicle has snagged it. If you are going slow enough, you should be able to stop before the line snaps without causing any damage. Cable lines that sag like this one are intentionally loose. Cable lines are supposed to be 14 feet high. The side of the line in this picture is attached directly to a house, not 14 feet high on a pole. In many older neighborhoods, the lines are not 14 feet on the houses, so the city attaches the line higher on the telephone pole in an effort to make the total height more than 14 feet. You may be able to move your truck to the left side of the road and move under the high side of the line near the pole, but watch for traffic when you do. You may be able to borrow a broom or use a stick to push the line over the top of your vehicle. Cable only, don't try to push a power line over your vehicle. And as a last resort, you may need to back out of the situation to avoid a mishap with the cable line. Wires that are stretched tight between two wooden or metal poles usually are 14 feet tall. You still want to keep a close eye on anything that is above your truck and take every precaution to avoid hitting any objects including cable lines. Don't spend more than one second at a time looking at a cable line. Remember your one second recovery you might run into a ground hazard while looking up. The closer an overhead object looks, the slower you go in order to maintain your capsule of awareness overhead as well as on the ground. Stop the truck and get out to take a closer look if you question the height of any object. The third overhead clearance hazard is trees. Most drivers will have to travel under trees at one point or another in order to make it to a destination. Small branches will bend and not damage your vehicle other than small scratches which are normal. Be alert for larger branches that may damage the front of your vehicle. It may be necessary to straddle the lanes 
or move to the left in order to avoid hitting large branches. And again, watch for oncoming traffic if you're going to be driving in the middle of the road. Road grade. Changes in road grade are most frequently found near railroad tracks and parking lot entrances. You will normally see this sign if there is a sharp grade change at railroad tracks. Depending on how your vehicle is built, you may need to find an alternate route. If there is a hill at the entrance of a parking lot, avoid turning until after you have cleared the hill with your tractor. Keep in mind that three points determine a plane. Your three points are your rear tires and your fifth wheel. If gravity is pushing your trailer sideways and the fifth wheel pushes it further, you might tip over even on a small hill. This driver was lucky that his tractor made it past the hill before the trailer hit its tipping point, but he still had to call a wrecker to get the trailer off the tires. You will want to keep hills in mind when backing into a location because it is possible to scrape your trailer bumper on the pavement. If you see scrapes in the pavement from other trucks, this is a sign that you may have a problem at the location as well. Cresting the top of a sharp incline can cause the trailer to hit the mud flaps on your tractor. This driver tore the mud flaps off his tractor and still had to back out of the situation. When turning into a sharp incline, it is possible for the front of the trailer to catch the frame of the tractor. Tall stationary objects such as street signs and telephone poles are another reason road grade can be hazardous. Remember to leave some space to the side of your truck to compensate for your truck leaning over in order to avoid hitting fixed objects on the side of the road. Blind left turns. Note the angle of this intersection. If you are turning left, your cab creates a large blind spot issue. You cannot see behind the passenger window to the right, so you can't see if vehicles are coming and you don't know when it's safe to turn. See where the grass is gone from the side of the road? This is from trucks pulling over for better visibility. With the angle of the tractor facing the intersecting road straight, the driver can now see if traffic is coming from the right. This is called teeing up. And this is what it looks like from inside the cab. Intersections. Your rear trailer tandem will take shortcuts from the direction the tractor is traveling. This is called off tracking. The sharper you turn, the further away the trailer tires will follow from the tractor. Because of off tracking, whether turning left or right, if there is more than one turn lane, you need to take the outside lane. Borrowing space from the inside lane is standard procedure because the outside lane does not turn as sharply which reduces off tracking of the rear trailer axle. You can stop and allow vehicles on the inside lane to pass if it looks like your trailer is going to hit them. If you take the inside lane, you would either have to borrow space from a lane in your blind area or run over traffic medians. Let's take a look at right turns where off tracking is concerned. The easiest right turn you can make is one that has plenty of space to off track. This rarely happens. A slightly more difficult turn to make is B, the oncoming right turn, which is a right turn that does not have quite enough space to off track. You must use the oncoming traffic lane in order to make it around the corner. Our next intersection is C, the semi outgoing right turn which is a right turn that does not have enough space to off track even using method B. You must straddle the lane you are leaving as well as use the oncoming traffic lane in order to make it around the corner. Our last right turn intersection is D, the full outgoing right turn, which is a right turn that does not have enough space to off track using methods B or C. You must exit the lane you are leaving 
as well as use the oncoming traffic lane in order to make it around the corner. This method of turning is one of the most difficult procedures in driving. Whenever possible, try to stay away from intersections that require you to do this. Other vehicles will pass you on the right. All you can do is keep an eye out for them and stop until they get past you. Things get even more complicated when there are vehicles in the oncoming traffic lane. This can easily turn a B or oncoming right turn into a very difficult situation. Human instinct will tell us to try to go anyway because we don't want to hold up traffic behind us. It's okay to stop and wait for the oncoming vehicles to move through the intersection out of your way. Be patient and take your time. Don't worry about holding traffic up behind you. Taking a right turn without enough space will leave you with two choices. Run something over on the corner with your trailer or stop before running something over on the corner and have to back out of a situation. Either way, you will really be holding traffic up and causing a dangerous situation for yourself and others. Trailer Swing and Trailer Swag As an example of Trailer Swing, let's say you are the truck on the right trying to pull away from the trailer on the left. Remember in 3-step lane change how your trailer is on a swivel at the rear axle? See how close the rear of the trailer swiveled over toward the trailer on the left? It almost hit that trailer. It's fairly easy to avoid hitting objects with the trailer swing if you are aware of it. When you park next to another vehicle or object, try to park your vehicle at least 5 feet away from the object next to you. This will give the rear of your trailer plenty of space to swing over when pulling away. If you are not able to park 5 feet away, you might be able to pull straight up, then back up, to move the rear of your trailer away from the object to give yourself that extra space. If this is not possible, you might be able to pull away slightly, then turn more sharply as your tandem gets further away. Get out of your truck and look at your tail end every couple of feet if there is any question of tail swing. Next we'll talk about trailer swag. When you turn your truck sharply, the part of the trailer in front of the kingpin offsets and sticks out to the side of the tractor by as much as a foot. This is called trailer swag. You must keep in mind that just because the tractor can make it past an object does not mean the corner of the trailer will. While it's tempting to get as close to an object as possible in the front to avoid hitting objects with the rear of your trailer, you must give yourself a foot to the side of the tractor tires and keep a close eye on this area with your mirrors. Trailer swing and trailer swag are dangerous in traffic as well as in parking lots. Sharp turns when turning your vehicle sharply, such as in a U-turn, it is possible to hit the back of your tractor with your trailer, especially if you have a tractor fairing. If you have a day cab, try to turn right when turning around, so you can see the trailer from the rear window. Also, when turning sharply, it is possible for the rear of the trailer to move in reverse while the tractor is moving forward if your angle is more than 90 degrees. Similar to trailer swing, when you make a U-turn, make sure nothing is close to the rear of your trailer so it won't be able to hit anything. Get out of your tractor and look at the rear of your trailer every two or three feet if there's any concern about your trailer backing up on anything.